Here it is, the teenager, the 17 year old high school student who was at the center of the city bike Karen story has now spoken out, all right? I'm going to provide some significant context, nuance, his side of the story. But let me first start with this video, here it is. Ooh, chow. If you donated to this GoFundMe, after you watch this video, you might wanna get a refund. The only reason why Sarah Jane Comrie was able to produce this receipt for this bicycle is because she jumped over this young man standing right here who had his hands on the handlebars, jumped over him, impales herself on his bike and scans the QR code to begin the ride. How did all of this happen and how do I know what happened? Because that young man is my little brother. Mm. Bike number 5603915 was in my brother's possession from St. Nicholas Ave in Manhattan Ave all the way to First Ave in East 30th Street from the hours of 6.33 p.m. to 7.19 p.m. At 7.19 p.m., they dock the bikes. Sarah Jane Comrie walks up to them, asks, hey guys, can I use one of you guys' bikes? She says this as there are other bikes sitting idle at the bike rack. They politely decline, she asks them again, mentions that she's pregnant, and they still decline. Then with my brother standing next to the bike with his hands on the handlebars, she jumps onto the bike, sits on the bike, and scans the QR code. Now keep in mind, when Sarah produced her receipts, notice that when she did, she actually redacted the time at which she scanned that bike in. And just above, you can see it's squibbled out and that's probably due to her or her attorney. But let's continue. Started being recorded at 7.24 p.m., close to 7.25. Um, my brother's ride that was in the previous screenshot starts at 7.25. The initial ride where my brother rid, rode the bike all the way over to the bike, this bike dock ended at 7.19 p.m. Sarah Jane Comrie walked up to them. Sarah Jane Comrie asked them if they can use the bike. They said no. Sarah Jane Comrie sees that the bike is docked, gets up, scans the QR code, jumps onto the bike, starts screaming for help and fake crying so that she can get an electric city bike. There were a number of bikes at the bike rack already there when she arrived. She still proceeded to try to take the bike from my brother. Help. She's trying to get help for the city bike. The city bike is in my brother's possession on his account, 7.25 p.m. Docs it at 7.19 p.m., picks it back up 7.25 p.m. While she's screaming for help, 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 make, trying to make it seem like these boys stole this bike from her, the bike is on my brother's account. It is not defamation of character if the way that you behave reflected your character. Now listen, I know a good scam when I see one, baby. But baby, this scam takes the cake. But not only were there other bikes available, she deliberately tried to take it from some kids. This is going to be an absolute 100% transparent rendition of what the 17 year old said. Now, once again, he's in high school. He's a child. The reluctancy to say something was understandable because he hoped, the family hoped this would pass so that he can go to college. I know these things because I've talked to the sister multiple times. Remarkable family, by the way. Good people. We're going to do this right. Let's put it up. We remember this. The teen involved in the city bike viral video along with his mother. They have now spoken to News One to give their side of the story. The question first posed was about the reluctancy to speak out. Mary and Michael are eager to talk to Monique Judge of News One. But Betty, their mother is reluctant to let Michael speak with anyone. He's only 17 years old. He's my baby, Betty says. He's a senior in high school. He should be planning to attend his prom and looking forward to walking the stage at his graduation in a few weeks. But instead, he and his family have spent the last week and a half living in turmoil. Michael is the teen in the infamous 
City Bike video with Sarah Jane Comrie. Here's what the teen says happened. Michael said after resting in Harlem orbit, the boys continued riding into the lower east side of Manhattan. They grabbed frozen yogurt and then headed to the city bike docking station at First Avenue and East Street, 30th Street near Bellevue Hospital. This is in the Kipps Bay neighborhood. They docked their bikes at 7.19 PM and sat there to rest. Michael insisted he and his friends never left the bikes unattended. They don't leave the bikes, Michael said. All four of his friends also have the same city bike reduced fare membership. So they dock the bikes to stop the timers from going over 45 minutes. Four of the boys were sitting on their bikes as they rested, but Michael was standing next to his bike with hands on the handlebars. Let me explain what's happening here. The program that they are referring to allows you to drive these bikes or ride these bikes for 45 minutes before it starts to charge you real money. And so in order to save a few dollars because he's 17 and not rich, they will literally dock the bike every 45 minutes or less, dock it back out and ride. This is a normative process. People who are well off do the same thing with the program afforded to them. So this was the background of why he was docking and taking the bike back. Now I'm going to provide a contrast in what the attorney said, what the statement read and what actually the teenager says happened. Uh, They were there for roughly a few minutes when he said, Michael said, Sarah Jane Comrie, approach their group. Uh Uh-oh, we have a conflict. Keep the graphic up, keep that up. The conflict is in the letter from the attorney. The attorney said the five boys approached her. According to Michael, that is completely untrue. They were already there and she approached them. She initially asked one of Michael's friends if she could take the bike he was resting on. He politely declined, informing her that they were going to be leaving shortly and using the bikes again. She next approached a different child in the group and asked him the same thing. The child also politely declined. Michael was still standing near his bike with his hands on the handlebars. Put up the picture again of them two next to each other. Let me explain a few things about the law. Uh, She may believe uh, that she should have access to it. um, And let's say she even scanned something. Uh, It is not her property per se. She does not have ownership of the property. She has not yet taken control of it in this moment. And the dynamic of her grabbing the phone, which we do have the picture that shows uh, that action seem to be quite aggressive. The allegation of her grabbing the phone, well, that's unwanted physical contact. That's called battery, if true, there's more. According to Michael, Sarah Jane Comrie posed the question to him. Can I please have this bike? Michael said he declined. Now, why did Michael decline? Well, according to Michael, this was his only mode of transportation to get home. And he needed his bike to get home. Also, there were other bikes around, as the sister mentioned in the initial video posting. So why did she want his bike? According to Michael, the bike he docked was a newer version bike and easier to ride. Can I please have this bike? Michael said he declined. No, I'm about to take it back out. He told her, Michael said, Sarah Jane Comrie then said to him, I'm pregnant. Can you help a pregnant woman out? Michael said, he then told her, I'm sorry, ma'am. I've ridden this bike all the way from the Bronx and I need this bike to get back home. Michael says that is when Sarah Jane Comrie moved closer to him and his bike, leaned over him and scanned the QR code with her phone even as he 
had his hands on the handlebars. That is called possession. He has control of the bike. The bike is in his possession. She then pushed her way, according to Michael, onto the bike and attempted to remove it from the docking station and take it anyway. That was at 7.24 PM and that is when the boys began recording. Now put up the picture again of Miss Comrie, the three, okay? According to the young men, they started recording because they were afraid. Uh, things were getting uh, really, really tense, it was escalating. She's yelling for help as if they're robbing her. None of that was happening, none of that was true. Very dangerous situation, obviously. She is putting them in by yelling help in a city like this. Michael says, she did move closer to him, he was already there. He's established his location. The rest of the interaction plays out on video. Sarah Jane Comrie, dressed in scrubs, bearing the NYC Health Plus Hospitals logo, removed her work ID badge from her neck, placed it in her bag along with a brown paper bag she was holding and began screaming for help. The boys can be heard repeatedly telling her it's not her bike. During the film part of the interaction, Michael was able to successfully push the bike back into the dock. He said he then entered the bike's number into his phone to put the reservation back on his account. Michael said when Sarah Jane Comrie noticed him doing this, she then snatched his phone out of his hand, which is shown in the video. It is amazing to me, let's put her picture back up. That no one on her side, because believe me, we can see one thing and have many different opinions. Opinions are great, free speech. But it's interesting that nobody contextualized the reality that she is one, engaged in this action with a child, he's a minor. Number two, trying to take someone's phone out of their hand is a crime. Trying to um, physically contact or touch someone, that's unwanted physical contact, that is a crime, okay? There's more, put up the picture of the lawyer. You see, all over social media, a whole lot of people, majority, very racist groups. Uh, they have been calling for my head, calling me a racist and other things because I have an opinion. Now, in proper context, I apologized to the city bike Karen if I was wrong. But I did do something I should not have done. I should not have made such a conclusion so early without at least hearing from the other side. Lesson learned, that's called context. But let's put this attorney back up. You see in his statement, in the statement that basically all of mainstream media ran with, he said the five young men approached her. They said, no, they were already there, she approached them. There's no mention about her grabbing the cell phone from a minor. But it is in the video and also corroborated by witnesses at the scene. His name is Justin Marino. Now for those of you who are saying that this guy is going to sue me, this is what I have to say to that. I wish a Karen would, <laughs> okay? There's more, Michael's story directly contradicts Directly contradicts the narrative that Justin Marino, the attorney, the employment attorney representing Sarah Jane Comrie gave in a statement he wrote to the New York Post. Marino, the attorney, originally made public redacted alleged receipts. But as of Wednesday, his apparent Twitter account hosted the unredacted receipts showing Sarah Jane Comrie had rented the bike for one minute at 7.24 PM, okay? Let's put it up 
The family provided News One receipts for the city bike purchases. They show he originally rented the bike at 5.53 p.m. He returned it after his final ride at 10.12 p.m. Each of the receipts he sent for review shows him riding the bike in intervals of 45 minutes or less, redocking the bike and then taking it out again a short time later. Things turned worse for the teen, the child who's in high school about to go to college. Things got worse for this teen when attorney Marino put his statement out in the media. That's according to the family. When those receipts got released, everything flipped, Michael said. People started calling me a thief, a thug, and a black man. The reason why he made that nuance, that that context was important is because he's not a black man. He's a black kid, he's a black child. See, he doesn't have a problem becoming a black man. But he is well aware, he's a high school student, he's a child. It's definitely having an effect on me, he continued. It's just like, wow, this is crazy, Michael added. She did something wrong and she basically got rewarded for it. She's made over $100,000 on GoFundMe. She got all that, all the white conservatives on her side. Everyone who was on my side has just kind of stayed silent. Not me. Let me tell you why this is emotion. He's 17, he's 17. You see, for young black males, moments like this have a way in this country of defining them, defining them, summarizing them. He's a good kid. He's actually really smart too, brilliant. He's going to do great things in college. The comments I have seen about him in particular have been very troubling. Um, many have engaged obviously in true defamation. There are those who said, I engaged in defamation against uh, Ms. Comrie. Um, that did not happen, my opinion stands. Nobody here doxed Ms. Comrie, her information was already out there. 35 million people had already viewed the video. <clears throat> but I'm a 40 plus year old black man. I take the darts, the arrows are fine with me and taking them for many years. This is a 17 year old child. Even if you think he should have been more courteous to the woman who said, I want that bike, I don't want those. I want the one you got, okay? I want the one that your hands on. Even if you say he should have been courteous, just remember it was his courtesy to give. It was his courtesy to give if he wanted to give it and he had in my opinion, a very valid explanation as to why he did not give her the bike. People can look at one thing and see it different ways. That happens every day. But let's be clear, put the attorney back up again. Sir, there's one major issue that I have. And I'm asking for you. To retract the statement that says the five boys approached her. That is my request to you, attorney, because that statement is why so many individuals, a big reason why so many individuals, I believe, are now saying that he's a thief, that they are thugs, that they came at her. You see, narrative attorney is important. All right, David, thoughts? 
Well, a couple of things. I mean, I I get how emotionally charged this is all the way around. And we are all entitled in this country of ours to express opinions, to draw whatever analysis we see based on whatever evidence we want. And my analysis has not changed from the beginning. And that is what jumped out to me, even despite knowing the he said, the she said, the conflicting stories, the lawyers, the claims, the back and forth, it jumps out to me that there she was doing a fake crying yeah. in the midst of this dispute. And to me, that signaled that she was looking for trouble. In my opinion, she was looking to validate her own racism. It's my opinion that she was racist in this. It's my opinion that she was the adult in this situation who could have backed off and said, okay, let's calm down. Tell me a little bit more about the bicycles. Why are you so attached to this bicycle? It's the new one, I would like, but she didn't do that. She merely escalated this. And again, I, you know, I'm with you in terms of her attorney. If her attorney, which it sounds like he has done, is out there making false statements about these young black kids, the attorney has an obligation to correct the record. If the attorney is going to demand that everybody who said something maybe prematurely or maybe without the full context should retract this, then the attorney should be the first one to retract his false statement. Yeah, and uh, just so you know, I got some people trying to get me the full video because there are cameras in that area. And I wanna make it very clear who approached who. So that operation is underway. We'll bring it to you as soon as it comes.